as baby boomers age, society in America has aged. And I can just give you some facts. You know, back in 1900, there were about 3 million older Americans, that is people 65 and older. Now, if you talk about what we are seeing now, it's about 55 million um, adults that are 65 and older. But the fastest growing population in the U.S. is not just those people 65 and older, but it's the people 85 and older, 100 and older. If you look at why people are living longer, it's really a combination of three or four things. It's certainly a little bit of our genes. It's who you are. We used to think that was the biggest factor, but that's not the biggest factor at all. It's how we live, meaning our health behaviors could be your lifestyles. It's having a good diet. It's being physically active. These are the kinds of behaviors that will make a difference. But the third leg of that is really where we live. We're now understanding that um, there's a lot of social determinants of health. Even your zip code, where you live, can be as powerful predictor of mortality and morbidity as something that we think of traditionally, like smoking or obesity. Older people are more likely on average to have chronic conditions. And those chronic conditions will put a um, demand on healthcare services. The cost of health care will go up as a nation as a whole as we get older. Also, another thing as we get older, there are more people who have Alzheimer's or related dementias. So there will be an increased burden on care. If you think about who cares for older Americans, it's still primarily their families. So what's going to happen is we'll have an increased burden on families who are already stretched really thin, will have increased demand on healthcare workers. They're not going to be enough healthcare workers. We need to rethink what um, we think about aging across the life course. The average life expectancy was in the 60s, then you probably didn't spend much time in retirement. But now you're going to spend a huge amount of time between the average age of retirement still in the 60s for both men and women, a little bit younger for women. So we need to think of meaningful roles for older people. Certainly they can volunteer and give back to the community and a lot do. Um, they can go back to school. I mean, it used to be that you thought about college is only for 18 to 24 year olds. But if you look around college campuses today, there are more people in what would be called the third age. So we have to rethink the roles and responsibilities of, of older people and society as a whole. If you have a bigger focus on chronic disease prevention and management, if you can affect those modifiable factors, that is the lifestyles and the living conditions, people could be reaching older age at a healthier stage. From a societal point of view, we should encourage and support older adults who want to stay in the workplace. We should encourage and support family members who want to care for their loved ones who might need some additional assistance. And we need to think about policies that will make it easier for older people to remain an age in place. Most older people want to live and stay at home. They don't want to move out. So now there's a movement, a very positive movement called age-friendly cities. How can you have a city more friendly toward the needs of older people? One thing is transportation. If you're in a place like I am in Texas and you don't drive, you've really lost your independence because there's very little public transportation. So it's important to think about 
what society can do to make um, environments where you live more age-friendly.